It's my pleasure to be here tonight with all of the, the faculty and staff, uh, the parents, family, honored guests, and of course, our graduates. Um, as Mrs. Bourgeois mentioned, my name is Darren Nelson, so who cares? Uh, I graduated from here in 1992. Put that in perspective for most of the graduates, that's before the internet. <laughs> and I didn't really feel that old until I started to see the slideshow, and most of those pictures were taken after I graduated by four years. So that's exciting. Um, so Manitoba is a really interesting place because it's such a small community. And you, you look around, and the people that are in here are here because of you. They're not here because they have to be. They're not here because you know they're, they're, they're told. To. They're here because the people, uh, you're here. The people in this room are here because of you. Remember that. What's really fun about being from Manitoba is it's so small. I mean, I think there's about 1,800 people left. Um, and no matter where you go in this world, you'll meet someone that's been here, been from here, know someone from here, or at least talk to me on a plane. So I've, I'm approaching 3,000 flights, and every single one of those flights, the people I'm sitting next to, whether they like it or not, knows everything about Manitowoc. At the end. <laughs> so put your best foot forward when you're out there. Be the ambassador to Manitowoc. Be, be the best representatives of our of our dwindling community because you have to keep it alive. So that's it. That's it for the, the serious stuff. So now I'm gonna get you guys to stand up real quick. And now you sit down. <laughs> I'm, just, no, you just I'm just checking to see if the mic is working. <laughs> so you've completed an important milestone. And this is one big step on your own personal journeys. I'm really happy to be part of it, it's, it's exciting. Um, I had the opportunity to meet with most of you today and I realized that the last thing a graduating high school student wants to see is some clown showing up with a notebook and gonna ask a bunch of questions of you. So I really do appreciate you taking the time to answer my questions and I know you're dying to know the results of the survey so we're gonna go through those in, in, a, in a second. Um, but I do want to thank you personally, individually, um, that you shared your time with me today. Uh, I learned a lot from you. I got an insight into who you are, where you're coming from, and what you aspire to be. Um, I regret not being able to meet with all of you and not spending more time with the ones I did spend time with, but I am truly grateful. So, as wonderful as your accomplishments are today, and I, you know, I've been there, I salute you, it's fantastic. I think the only other group of people uh, that are happier than you today and deserve equal if not more thanks than you today are your parents. And I think the parents in this room have supported you and driven you through rain and snow, have listened to the phone calls that say you weren't at school, have had to write you know, signed attention slips, or I'm not sure if you still do that anymore. But I think um, the parents in this room deserve your applause. Um, on the logistics side, I realize I'm one taking up valuable time, which that's, I cut the mic, so it's. And also standing in between a crowd of very energetic uh, young men and women and the exit and a um, unsupervised yet responsible after party that I'm sure is to come. So I will try to be brief from this point forward. All right, so. For the, for the folks that don't know, I asked uh, four questions of, of most of the graduates today. Uh, they weren't complicated, but I wanted to share with you some of the results that came through. So the first one was, how do I feel about the prospect of living away from home? Right? This is for one of the realities of living in Manitowoc, is if you want to pursue post-secondary, you have to leave. And that's, that's just something we all accept. So if you see, if you look at the graph, and, and by the way, there's nothing cooler than having a ginormous pie chart behind you when you, when you speak. Um, okay, I thought that was funny. <laughs> so half of, the, half of the respondents liked the idea. Um, a third were very honest about it. They were unsure or afraid. And some of you are going to stay around. It means it's not applicable. We're going to come back to you guys in a second. But those of you that liked it, now this is anonymous, so you're not going to know who's who. But for the parents in the room, you'll know the the, your, your kids that liked it because in between, I would say, two to six months of them being away, you're going to get a call. No, actually, you won't. You get a text because kids don't call anymore. You'll get a text asking for something like 
food, or money, or food and money, a bus ticket, and so on. And it's not going to happen right away. It's usually preceded by a text, or if they're really desperate, a phone call that sounds something like this. Hi, I really miss you guys. <laughs> or I love you. <laughs> and then you just, just brace because it's coming. <laughs> and the people in the not, not applicable category, well, they're deferred another year. So you know, I'll, leave, I'll leave the mystery up to you. So who's, who's who? All right, next one. So if you've ever been for an interview, you've always been asked, where do you see yourself in five years? And the answer that you as the interviewee is thinking, well, I want to be your boss in five years, but you don't say that because you kind of want that job. But when I asked um, this group what they see themselves doing in five years, pretty interesting, it's kind of all over the map. Um, a third are working, uh, over half are still in school, and the delusional 7% are working their dream job. <laughs> which, which, is, which is interesting. Uh, and I can, only, I can only say that because I can only draw on my own experience where uh, I started off selling ice cream in Manitowoc and then selling CDs and tapes and been an entrepreneur ever since and moved to, obviously moved to social work and then from there became a high-tech entrepreneur and that's kind of like the natural career path that everyone should follow, right? But just to say is, you probably, sitting from where you are today, it's hard to see what five years looks like. Going back, the internet didn't exist, well it existed but it wasn't commercially available in 1992 when I graduated high school that ended up being a large part of my career. So what doesn't exist today that will be around in five, 10, 20 years that you may be a significant, a significant driving force behind or a participant in, right? What skills are out there that don't exist that, you, that you'll acquire? So, so who cares? These things, these are just fun, right? They, they just look good on, on the slide. So don't, if you don't know what you want to do, don't look it up. All right, next one. This one was interesting because 100% of the people who I managed to ask felt really good about their accomplishment today, and they should. 93% um, of you felt proud. A more modest individual said he felt okay. I think he felt proud, but I wrote it down anyway. So that, that's really good, so that's exciting. And the last one, which was my trick question, or my trap question, because it was critical to my presentation, was do I know what motivates me? Do you guys know what motivates you? And the early respondents, I let you off the hook if you said yes, and I didn't drill into that, but then I got smarter as I learned a little bit more about you. And overwhelming, the answer is, is no. So what does motivate you? And there's some really good answers from my family, my marriage, my school. Those are all really good. Those, those are the things you, you aspire to. But what's that one thing in the back of your head that kind of kicks you in the pants, that makes you get up in the morning? What, what is that? And, and you might not know what that is. And you'll, you'll discover it over time. But it's important you know that because on your own journey, on your, per, your personal journeys, you're going to hit roadblocks. I wrote it road blicks on here, by the way, so no one's proofread this, so I'm calling it roadblocks. You're gonna hit roadblocks, stumbling blocks, and my favorite, you're gonna hit brick walls. And they are going to be overwhelmingly a sense of defeat. And that's okay. Just marble in it. When, when, when you get knocked down, just, you're meant to feel bad. You're meant to be humbled, but marble in that. But why? Why? Because those are unique learning opportunities that were presented to you at that point in time. No one else, no one else had their computer crash at 4.30 in the morning when printing out an assignment. That's just for you. That's a unique learning opportunity that karma has presented to you and you alone. And it's up to you to decide what you're going to do with that. Yes, it's going to suck. Yes, you're going to pull your hair out. Yes, you're going to try and find people to blame. But it doesn't matter. It happened. So what do you do with that? Go back to your motivator. What motivates you? Get past that. Use that opportunity, use that challenge. Turn that into a plank for your platform for you to continue your journey to walk forward. And forward only. Don't dwell on the negative stuff that's happened to you in the past. Don't worry about it. It's because there's more coming. It just doesn't get easier than this. Like this is, as hard as it was to get here, it gets harder. There's your pep talk. <laughs> All right. So, I think that's it. And I mean, with, with that, um, one, I hope you don't feel too beat up by that. Oh, I got it. Is that the last slide? The, the last one's right in regard was, who's your favorite teacher in high school? And we didn't, uh, we didn't get a chance to have any the results because it was such a close tie. Everyone was, everyone was tied for first. <laughs> All right, so with that, we now have the important uh, business to attend to, and that's the uh, 
uh, proceeding of this ceremony, but I think let's take this second to honor our graduates in a manner most befitting of their exemplary accomplishments. Thank you.